friends, I'm back after a two week hiatus. Not really, I just had a lot of stuff going on. And I'll tell you what, staying at the Cape of the week of the 29th of August, during the first launch attempt, all the way to the second launch attempt, the 3rd of September, just drained me. I guess I'm not that young buck anymore that can stay in a tent for a week. I used to do it as a kid all the time. But after that second scrub, I felt defeated. I can't imagine how the flight controllers and those operators felt during the scrubs. But here I am to pick up where I left off with the Artemis 1 SLS update for you. NASA held a press briefing at 11 a.m. on September 8th, saying that they are replacing the seals from the 8-inch and 4-inch hydrogen intake connection at the core stage of the SLS rocket, which days before, oh man, I forgot my script. I wrote it down as my notes. I recommended that they build some type of a tent or like a shield around the ports to protect them from the outside elements and the environment. And that's exactly what they're going to do. I mean, I'm no rocket scientist, but it's pretty much common sense. This is a step that they should have taken a long time ago, being the fact that they've had these leaks since the wet dress rehearsal. So as of now, the ports and the seals have been replaced. They're going to try to refuel the rocket on the 17th of September, just to test to make sure there's no more leaks. But don't get all excited, people. NASA still has to get approval from the range coordinator and the range administrator. The range is in charge of safety in the area if any major malfunction happens. It's almost like pulling a permit for NASA. NASA has given a flight termination system reset waiver to the range of the dates of September 27th. That way they have permission to extend the battery of the termination computer that destroys the rocket if any major malfunction happens. If the range does not approve this waiver, that's really gonna suck because NASA will have to roll back SLS to the vehicle assembly building. Every time the rocket's moving on the crawler, it can cause wear and tear on the fuselage and connectors adding more issues. I mean, SLS has been out in the elements since the first test on the pad. It's been out in the elements for almost a month and a half. That's a long time for a rocket like this to be out in the elements, especially here in Florida. The reason why NASA picked the 27th, by the way, which 80 minute window, I believe, windows change every now and then. The reason why NASA picked these days is because of the conflict that it could have with the DART mission. For the DART mission, they'll have to use the deep space network that NASA and others use for monitoring the DART mission, which will be impacting an asteroid. The chances will be for them to try on the 27th after the DART mission. I made a fun, detailed video about that DART mission. I'll put it down in the description below. NASA would love to have a couple of days in the beginning of October, but those dates also conflict with the Crew-5 launch that's going to be launching four new crew members to the International Space Station. Artemis 1 is practically being like the grandma that doesn't get out of the highway. Come on, grandma! Let's go! Hydrogen leaks on the right! Go, move it. <laughs> the crawler was seen on the 7th of September moving towards a crawler way to stand at attention in case the rollback is needed. NASA has been hesitating to answer questions about how much is being spent for these scrubs, fueling costs and repair costs. All they say is this. We don't launch until it's right. It's not going to fly until it's ready. The cost of two scrubs is a lot less than a failure. They do it by the book and when it's ready. And as far as cost, I mean, I, I, I can't give you a number. And that's NASA for you. I'm sure somebody knows and is going to be running the numbers pretty soon. But I do understand why they stall on answering these questions. It's probably because they're still not done spending and we can still have more scrubs. I know so many people that are irritated and they were even being aggressive on some social media sites complaining that NASA just doesn't know what they're doing. I've been around and I've followed the space shuttle program for years. This is a test rocket and unfortunately the demographics of this generation has changed as people become more selfish. The least thing that these people are thinking about is the crew that's going to be on board for Artemis 2. I mean, the Artemis 1 doesn't have a crew, but it will have a crew. It's designed to have a crew. 
This rocket was supposed to be tested without the Orion capsule or the service module on board in 2016 and 2017, but that was never done. So everything lies on this one launch. That's why it's so crucial to get it right. That's why they're having all these issues to get it right. I can understand how frustrating it might be, especially if you're coming from another country or another state to see the launch and it gets scrubbed. But it's not a matter of if it will launch, it's a matter of when it will launch. And I tell you what, 27th looks pretty promising, in my opinion. Imagine what the first crew could be thinking watching all of this. Yo, talk about anxiety, jeez. Well, I just wanted to give you this quick little update and let you guys know that I'm back at it again. Thank you so much, my friends, for watching. I'm also working on a video of how it was when I was out there at the launch. I just haven't gone through all that footage just yet. As soon as I got there, I was so excited that I wanted to go live. I wanted to give you guys the point of view that I was watching. But I found out that you needed a thousand subscribers to go live on your phone. What? Which is silly. I got a desktop here and I can go live. Why do I need a thousand subscribers to go live on my phone? Can anybody answer that? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. So since I couldn't go live, I just filmed people waiting. People were grilling out. We had some jet skis in the water. People were fishing. Everybody was having a great time meeting one another. Everybody was practically rocket fans. It wasn't a Woodstock. It was almost like a rocket stock. And some people were smoking some of that devil's lettuce. Smoke weed every day. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you guys sticking around for all of my videos. A special thank you to my subscribers, old, and I've made a few new ones. I consider each and every one of you my friends. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care. Bye-bye.